Hi, I'm Scott. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So, I thought I'd kick things off with the channel with a time lapse for video of me completing a full drawing from start to finish. For those of you who've followed me over from my Facebook page, firstly, thank you for your continued support. It really does mean a lot to me. If you are already a follower of mine from my Facebook page, you probably already know that I've done a few live streams already. I appreciate they can be a little bit dull as they are streamed in real time, so you would have predominantly not really seen much progress in each stream, which is why I thought a time lapse video would be better suited to the content I create. So, as there is a huge, very public, high profile court case going on at the moment with the subject of this piece, I thought it would be very relevant to do a portrait of one of the many characters that this actor has played. If you haven't already figured it out, I'm talking about Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, of course, who is played by Johnny Depp. I've been a huge fan of Johnny Depp for a long time, and having been in a psychologically abusive relationship previously with a woman who is BPD slash histrionic, I can fully empathise with Johnny in this situation. So to start off with, I've set up my reference image and my drawing with grid lines. This is actually called the, the grid method. This grid just allows me to get proportions about right for my initial out outline sketch. Once I've got the outline sketch in place, I'll then erase the grid lines. So as you can see here, I'm just outlining the uh, just sort of the features on the face really. Um, as you can see, I'm actually doing the eyes at the minute. It takes a little bit just to get the eyes looking somewhat right and somewhat in the right shape and position um, but as I said the, the grid lines will help with that that will just sort of help place the eyes on the, on the, on the drawing. All the while whilst I'm going through the, the drawing and, and sort of drawing in the, the main features of of the face, I'm paying particular close attention to the reference image, always sort of checking back every every two, three seconds as I'm drawing, uh, just to make sure that I get those proportions correct and everything in the right place. Uh, the worst thing you can do really is, is, is set the drawing up and set the outlines up um, with the proportions wrong, because then at the end of the day you, you're drawing something that's completely out of proportion and the, the end result won't sort of look like the, you know, the subject that you're trying to draw, I suppose. Here you can see I'm just, just finishing off the eye. This is actually cut from um, the next sort of day. We'll make all together this, this drawing has, well so far this drawing has taken roughly about eight hours. Um, the drawing is sped up 16 times so you can, I hope you, I hope you can appreciate just how long um, each each drawing actually takes to, you know, to get it to the quality that it will eventually be. So here you can see I'm starting in the top left corner. Um, the reason I start in the top left corner, uh, not to start with the eyes, is because um, because I'm right-handed. What tends to happen is if you start in the middle of your drawing and then work your way out, you tend to find that all the features that you've sketched in, you've taken the time to sketch in, become very blurred as your hand moves across the page, as it pushes the um, the graphite around on the page. It also ends up your, your drawing looking very muddy and just looks a mess really so I always start in the top left corner and then work my way to the bottom right corner if possible. Um, also you can see me resting my hand on the reference image there that's just to prevent again my hand from picking up any any uh, graphite or anything on my hand and then sponging it across the rest of the drawing. Now once I've once I've actually got all the all the features correct and uh, sort of in the right place, I mean it doesn't have to be 100% accurate as long as they are, you know, 90% in the right place. Um, what I then do is I'll then I'll then pick what's known as a mid tone, which is something it's a tone in between um, sort of like the darkest tone on the drawing 
on the reference image and sort of in between that and the lightest tone. So what I'll then do is pick a mid tone and then I will just try sort of um, uh, shading in some of that mid tone and it gives you a, it just gives you a good sort of midpoint so you know which which areas need to be darker, which areas need to be lighter. Um, and you can always use um, blend stuff just to blend all those out. That's what that white tool is that I'm, I'm, you see me using occasionally. So I'm just going in with a, um, a dark pencil. Um, just for reference, the, um, the actual pencils that I'm using are the Faber Castell uh, Pit Graphite Matte Pencils. Um, I'm not supported, I'm not sponsored by Faber Castell. Um, so I actually bought these out of my own money, um, sort of by myself. I've, really, I've heard really good things from them, and so far they are, you know, they're standing up to be really good pencils. But the reason I picked those is because they have uh, this particular range has some of the darkest tone graphite available. Um, the, the graphite in this set actually goes up to a 14B, which is uh, the one you can actually see me using here. Uh, so 14B, it's, it's practically black. Um, you do still have to be a little bit careful occasionally when you're um, when you're doing your sort of dark shading uh, that you don't get any graphite sheen. Graphite sheen is basically when you emboss the paper with graphite. What tends to happen is um, you end up with with sort of like a shiny finish, um, which you want to sort of avoid at all costs. Sometimes it isn't it isn't possible when you do need to get the, the really dark tones, but. Um, you have to avoid it at all, at all costs, really, um, because what happens is the shiny sort of embossed areas will then they'll then take on a characteristic of them being lighter than they already are, which kind of defeats the the whole object of using the darker graphite. Here you can see I'm just going in with a blending stump, just smoothing out those areas and giving a little bit of texture to the uh, the bandana that he's wearing. I will. I will actually be putting a video up, um, you know, in the, in the not so distant future, um, just about how to create different textures and, and sort of different techniques to create textures, not just for skin textures, but for fabrics, that kind of thing. So keep your eyes open for that video landing within the um, within the next sort of four or five months. And here you can see I'm I'm just shading in the sort of various creases on the edge of his bandana. Um, and I'm going in here with just a darker tone just to darken up those those sort of shadowed areas and also adding a little bit more darker tone to the mid tones um, the middle of the bandana that he's wearing I really enjoy doing fabric textures actually it's quite interesting because you don't just have the sort of shaded effect of sort of you know the light transitioning from a, a darker area to a light area but you also have kind of like a pattern to, to sort of like a fabric if you will um, although I haven't sort of I haven't actually got it in on this on this particular video um, eventually what I'll be doing is is darkening up that mid tone and adding not not entirely detailing the, the sort of threads of the fabric but adding some kind of like like a hint uh, and it really sort of it tricks the eye into thinking that there is a, a sort of fabric texture there. And here you can see me using the blending stump again. These blending stumps are brilliant. They're, um, they're basically it's compressed rolled paper. Um, what you do is you you sort of smudge around the graphite onto these onto the blending stumps, and they actually eventually they will act kind of like a, a pencil, in the, like a very soft pencil, if you will, um, and sort of push the graphite around, but in a very very subtle way. So you can actually use them to to both draw and to actually blend in um, sort of darker areas into lighter areas. It is a really nice transition. So again here I'm just adding some various mid-tones to the creases and whatnot um, just to give that effect that the fabric is sort of rippled um, and then I eventually will go over with uh, the blending stump again just to smooth out those transitions and smooth out the actual, um, the actual pencil strokes a little bit more. 
Um, the key to it really is is light strokes and building up the layers. Um, you can sort of go in too heavy too soon with a really dark pencil and then when you try and blend that out it becomes very very difficult to blend out so it's always important to start with a lighter lighter shade pencil like a lighter um, sort of gradient pencil if you will and then uh, blend that out and then add more to it if need be um, again it is all very subjective it's um, there is a sort of quite a bit of artistic license involved in this but a, a lot of it is sort of trying to pick out you know the right shades and the right sort of amount of pressure you need to get those shades as you can see there I'm just using what's known as a blend um, a needable eraser the needable eraser it's it does come in very handy um, Especially if you've put on too much graphite to start off with and you, you feel sort of an area is just slightly too dark for what you're trying to achieve because you, you sort of you need the eraser into a sort of shape that you, that you want and you can actually lift off the graphite that you've already put on. Um, as long as you've not sort of blended it in too much you can, you can actually sort of you know pretty much take it. It's an eraser at the end, at the end of the day, it's, you know it will, it will erase the graphite. Um, to some extent, you know, if the graphite is too heavy or you've used too, too dark a grade of graphite, then it, you will sort of struggle. But as I said, that that all sort of comes into effect when you, you know, when you, because you use lighter tones to start off with, or I use lighter tones to start off with, um, you can sort of spot any mistakes that you make at, at the beginning and, and sort of correct them as you go along. So again here I'm just I'm just putting in the darker tones towards the edge uh, towards the sort of edges of the bandana, you know, sort of where they are in shadow. Um, and I'm going in there, that's just a piece of um, cotton wool that I'm using just to blend it out, just to give a little bit more of a soft texture. Um, but again then I'm just going back in with a darker, darker um, grey pencil, um, just getting those outlines. Um, the trick is with hyper-realistic drawing is not actually drawing hard lines like that um, I don't know if you've noticed on black and white photographs but black and white photographs they don't actually have a, like a hard edge around sort of various objects and whatnot they, they're very much transitioned even something that's very much in high contrast it will have um, contrast and sort of shadow around it um, which I use the I use the sort of heaviest grade that I can just to get that initial outline. But then I'm, what I will do is I'll blend out that outline. Uh, use my blending stumps just to create a bit more of a, a bit more of a softer transition between the dark area and the and you know transitioning to the light area. So again, just using that blending stump just to both both just blend out the graphite that I've just put down but also add a little bit more a little bit more graphite as you can see it looks to be sort of getting darker and that's that's sort of one of the good things about using blending stumps is, is that you can actually use them as as a pencil um, to some respect um, and actually add graphite um, onto areas where you where you feel maybe if you know if you did sort of shade it with with an actual pencil, it probably would take it a little bit darker and too quickly, um, which is why the, the blending stumps are good because they allow sort of a really good controlled amount of graphite to be put on. Now, as you can see here, I'm, I'm actually just starting doing some of the uh, the detail of the patterns on the um, on the bandana that he's wearing. Uh, this is probably a little bit too soon because um, I haven't quite got the the mid-tone shading right so um, what I'm going to do is I'll probably add a little just a little bit more graphite into that mid-tone in the center section of, of the bandana uh, just to darken it up slightly um, and then add the as I said before add the, the texture for the fabric um, but as you can see here I'm just I'm just outlining roughly the the uh, sort of patterns on the on the bandana um, just to sort of get an indication of, of shape I suppose and, and how those patterns are affected by sort of the various creases and whatnot in 
in the bandana itself or in the fabric. So this is going to be a two, two maybe three part video in total. Um, I appreciate sort of, you know, they are 15, 16 minutes long each video, which I think it's probably just enough to keep your attention. Um, anything longer, I think then it will become a bit more tedious. It will become a bit more of, of like a live stream drawing, which as I said, they are, they can be quite sort of dull because you don't really see much progress in each drawing. So, which is why, like I said, uh, I think sort of like a time-lapse type video would be, would be better suited to the drawings that I do. So, thank you very much for watching this first video. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Um, this, this will sort of keep you updated with any videos, well, videos that I will be released in the uh, not so distant future. Um, also hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That will um, make sure you get the notifications when I do release new videos. So, uh, that being said, thank you very much for watching and I will hope to speak to you soon. Bye.